Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as you know, the NPTE for April just passed us by and we're about to head over and on to our July NPTE test dates. Just a reminder that over at PT Final Exam, we do have content for both PTs and PTAs. We try to make it accessible to both and help you and give you the tools you need in order to succeed on test day. So today we will be going through a practice question related to the genital urinary system. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we will be starting up our VIP class. This is our flagship product. This is one where we go through every system on the exam. If you need a robust study plan, this is the one for you, where we go over everything. We go over a ton of practice questions, it comes with all of our practice exams, comes with access to the crash course. Really, you get everything as a part of the VIP class. And I, you know, this is the one that I run personally. I really enjoy doing it. It's fun to get people across the finish line. So if you need a plan, we've got the tools to help you succeed. Please be sure to check that out over at ptfinalexam.com. Plus, if you'd like all of the cheat sheets and information contained in the podcast, all the things we talk about, be sure to head over to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can find all of our fun resources and get the tools you need, again, to succeed on the exam. So today we're going through a practice question. This is related to the genital urinary system. So as you recall, the genital urinary system really just has a handful of questions as well, four to seven questions. So today we'll be talking specifically about the urinary system or the urological system and we'll go through a practice question there. As per our usual, I will read you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and dive right in. When treating a patient receiving hemodialysis for chronic kidney dysfunction, which of the following precautions will be most important during exercise intervention? So when treating a patient receiving hemodialysis for chronic kidney dysfunction, which of the following precautions will be most important during exercise intervention? One, airborne transmission precautions. Two, contact transmission precautions. Three, droplet transmission precautions. And four, vehicle transmission precautions. So we've got, again, patient receiving hemody hemodialysis for chronic kidney dysfunction. Which of the following precautions will be most important? And we have the options airborne, contact, droplet, or vehicle transmission precautions. So as you guessed it, on this question, specifically about hemodialysis, the biggest thing to remember is that hemodialysis requires some type of vascular access. So almost always they put in some type of port or permanent or semi-permanent device in order to, to filter the blood. Really, they have to empty all the blood out of the body. They have to filter it, put it back in. So this, this port or this vascular access site is really the key concern for these patients who have or are on hemodialysis related to kidney dysfunction. So therefore, the key is that contact transmission precaution. This means that as you are working with the patient, especially in any situation where you come into contact on or near the vascular access site, that's uh, that port, you've got to be extremely cautious because that is a direct line into their vascular system which would be of key concern for these patients. They are already immunocompromised because of, because of their chronic kidney dysfunction. And so therefore, to introduce any type of illness or pathogen, especially at that, that access site, is going to be just, a, it will be catastrophic for the patient and it would be very wise for you as a PT to avoid doing that. So that infectious process is of great concern for these patients because, uh, and you know, let's be honest, contact precautions, these are, are really just means good hand hygiene and you glove up anytime you are coming in contact with the patient. And clearly this is of most import when we're talking about in the area of the vascular access port. So as far as among these options, the contact transmission precaution is clearly the most applicable. Airborne transmission precautions, this would be for individuals with some type of airborne particulate illness. So we're talking about specifically tuberculosis, chicken pox, and measles. Now droplet precautions, you could make an argument that droplet precautions would be important pretty much for anybody. You don't want anyone to sneeze on you if they have influenza. So that being said though, these folks, because of their chronic kidney dysfunction, they don't particularly have a droplet issue Rather, it's just you want to protect the patient from droplets, but 
you'd want to protect every patient from that. The, the real key or the, the kicker here is that, that vascular access site. And then finally, vehicle transmission precautions. This is used for primarily infectious organisms that come through food or water. And very often we're talking about like raw meats or undercooked meats like salmonella or E. coli. Both of these are examples of vehicle transmission illnesses. And as you'd imagine, that would be, again, of concern pretty much for every patient. However, for this patient particular, in particular, hemodialysis with chronic kidney dysfunction, you've got to just be very cautious about that port. You don't want to have any infectious organism coming into the port. So therefore, when you come into contact with the patient, especially anywhere near vascular access, you're going to be extremely cognizant and perform contact transmission precautions, which means you'll have fastidious hand hygiene. And then anytime you come in contact, you'll be gloving up and then washing hands after gel-based hand sanitizers. You'll be doing it all just to make sure you don't introduce any infection into this patient. Okay, so that's your practice question. Maybe just of note, those folks on hemodialysis, these folks tip typically have a lot of concern for fatigue management. So fatigue management is of key concern, especially on days when they are receiving hemodialysis, just because it is so fatiguing to them. But that being said, uh, you just got to take really good care of these patients. They, they typically have very low energy. You have to work around their hemodialysis schedule, which is typically three times a week. And so you as a PT, you've got a lot of concern about scheduling. And then on top of that, they have their immunocompromised, which means that, that you have to be very cautious about contact precautions anytime you're working with them. All of these are key concerns related to hemodialysis and chronic kidney dysfunction, and uh, we do get to see this really quite frequently as PTs. I remember I've had many, many patients who have been on hemodialysis. And so definitely something worth knowing as a first year PT. And that's one of the goals of the NPTE is to, to help really just to solidify and test you on knowledge that you have to know as a first year new grad PT, entry level PT. And this is certainly among those, those items. So with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't yet, please be sure to leave us a review over on Google Play, iTunes, or Spotify. Wherever it is you listen to this podcast, be sure to check out all the up other episodes we have. And in the meantime, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.